Okay. So excited to have you here today. As I mentioned, my name is Melissa. I'm the CEO and one of the mentors here at Build a Better Bakery. Our main mission is to make sure that baking business is simple for you with a step-by-step -step set of accessible um, information articles and courses and this group and mentorship and um, lots of other options like paperwork and one-on-one -on -one calls and everything that you might need to get started growing a baking business or maybe transitioning a baking business or essentially just, you know, working through whatever part of the journey you might be on. Now, let me double check that we are live. I want to make sure I can see everybody. All right, perfect. Looks like I am able to hear myself, so I think we're all good to go. Today's session is mostly for those who are just starting out or maybe a baker who needs a little help kind of dealing with um, what, are the, what are some really important things you need to focus on at the beginning of your business. I want to give you three hot takes today that I would tell any baking business entrepreneur to pay attention to, especially at the beginning, to make the whole process a lot easier as you get started. A lot of people have just joined our group over the last couple of days, which is great. We're so happy to have you here. And a lot of you said, how do I get started? So that's why we're working on this today. Um, you might have kind of a heavy set of questions as you're getting started, as you're venturing into this. So again, there is thankfully going to be today's session, but also a nitty gritty step-by-step -step compiled article already in existence on our website and even a supporting course for planning and getting started. So there's other things out there that cover teeny tiny nitty gritty steps ready for you available at any time. I can share those links for you via like a DM if you want to send me a message or you can even post here on the video. I'd be happy to send you that info and you can hop over and look at that. Today, I want to take our time and use it a little differently to focus on the three core values, those three hot takes that I think are really important and something I would suggest to um, a person just gearing up and getting started to sell. Hey, Lori, good to see you. If you're here, you can always throw up your hashtag live. I know you're here live with me. <clears throat> if you view this on the replay, go ahead and throw up your hashtag replay. You can check events in the group uh, to see if I posted anything new coming up you can send me a friend request on the Facebook platform so I can send you invites to each of these sessions whenever they are posted so you don't really have to keep looking in the events. You can join the email list for usually weekly replay links. I try to send out one email a week with the videos that we've posted and any resources and new workshops and things that we have going on. So you can always join the email list. Now the three hot takes I wanna to cover today are keep it clean, keep it simple, keep it consistent three things. When you start something new, like a baking business, even if you've already had another business before, baking business might be something new to you, just the basics of what's going on with it. And it can be really hard to tame all the emotions and the thoughts and the ideas and everything swirling around in your head as you're trying to get going. Like, where do you start? What can you focus on? Talking with a mentor like me or someone else in your community is a really good place to start if you want to kind of brainstorm and think through some options or thoughts. Or you can use, if you have a lot of time on your hands, you can do a ton of research and brainstorming on your own. And that can also sometimes alleviate the stress of starting, but tends to take longer if you're doing a lot of the work by yourself. You also can stick with a set core of values that align with your vibe if you already have those mentally kind of set up what you want to be focusing on. And you want to make sure they're built to attract and maintain a core client base. And that's where the three I'm going to suggest uh, are coming from, from my, from my perspective. Okay. Hey, Lucy, good to see you. Number one, keeping it clean, literally and figuratively. So clean products and presentation are key if you want to make recurring clients out of your very first clients. I would say the mark of a newbie baking business is dirty packaging, dirty, like greasy, um, unfit packaging. For some reason that happens to be like the, one of the first, you know, issues that I see with any new baking business, even the ones around in my little community, that's kind of what I'm seeing. So um, you want to avoid that right off the bat to gain traction ASAP so that those first few clients that you do get return to you and you can start building on that traction right away. So that might mean you have to invest a few dollars in quality packaging first out the gate. 
If you're not sure what I mean by that, you're welcome to send me a message. I can send you a recommendation. I have an entire list that's called the master baking supply list. It's all linked up in a document. I can send that to you. You're welcome to look at that. I know everyone has their own preferences, but finding like a good quality packaging provider is a great place to start when you're looking at uh, making sure people feel comfortable with you right away. Maybe grabbing a few logo stickers or printing them out on your own. And then lastly, just be try to be very conscious about grease and dirt and pet hair and everything that can be in or on your packaging. You wanna keep it absolutely clean, as clean as possible. Secondly, secondly, with the clean, keep it clean core value, I also mean the um, figurative clean as far as <clears throat> legal and practice, using an available name that's not trademarked, things like that, right? So you want, um, you want the business to have a good base to it legally, if you really should be focusing on that. Um, and I do have an article on cottage laws. If you live in the US, I can send that to you. You can read up on your state, uh, what's, what's involved if you're working from home. If you're working with a commercial, you're gonna be working with your local health uh, group, your institute, the agricultural department, wh whoever overlooks food businesses, you're gonna be listening to them as far as your legal legality of sales. And then also the whole point of naming your business if you're at that stage, there are some things to check on that you can easily do for free online <clears throat> to make sure that, you're saying, that your name is legally able to be used so that people aren't gonna come after you, trying to sue you because you're using their trademark name, that kind of thing. Um, so there are some other supporting resources for these two aspects as well. And if you're on those steps right now, let me know so I can send those to you so you can look at them. Number two, keep it simple. So keep it clean, keep it simple. Keep it simple means start small and work up from there. No one's expecting you to come flying out of the gate with a full service menu, right? Nobody is thinking, oh my gosh, like why doesn't she serve breakfast, lunch, dinner? And no, right? Like keep it simple. There's always more time to grow and add and change and all of that. So really maybe picking like one type of item to start with, nailing that recipe just nailing it, making sure that it works. Uh, you have access to all the ingredients. It makes sense. People are excited about it. And then start selling that item uh, consistently, which we'll talk about in number three, keep it consistent. So start small, pick one thing, nail it, sell that item. Then once that's solid, work on your next recipe or your next pro you know, type of product. Try to do one at a time and make it right and then move on to the next one. So you could consider running some taste testing trials if you aren't sure what people are interested in, or <clears throat> maybe you're not sure what type of bake people like better or ingredient people like better. You can work with testing trials to make sure your clients do enjoy what you want to sell before you actually do all the work to try to sell it. <clears throat> this is much cheaper and more efficient than trying to sell items that clients, clients don't want. So getting some information first is very beneficial for you. If you need help with this, again, DM me. I do have a specific resource that walks you through setting up taste testing trials, which are professional, effective, and even come with contracts and ways for you to protect yourself within the process because you will be having to you know, give this product to people to try. So there is some money involved and I just wanted to set it up for you in a way that was protective. So if you need that, let me know. Number three is keep it consistent. And this really just means figuring out a way to work consistency into your baking business schedule in a way that's one, it cannot be so overwhelming that you don't do it. And two, it doesn't have to be every single thing in the world. Again, it can be, keep it simple. It can be one thing, but we're looking for a way that you can continuously be consistent so that you stay visible and current, right? So that can mean lots of different things. We can make this super simple. You can make it more complicated, whatever you feel like makes sense for you. And, but again, it has to be something that you're actually going to do. So the purpose is to gain traction and visibility by working that in from day one. So people can understand what you do and who you are. This could be maybe like you set an alarm on your phone to post on your business page every other day. That's it, right? Like, let's say you want to post at 9 a.m. You set an alarm for every other day and it goes off and then you post a photo or you post a question or you post a funny meme or you post your menu or you post your schedule or you post some information or you post an FAQ, 
lots of opportunities to post information. It doesn't have to be a lot of information. People don't usually like reading anyway, right? <laughs> so it can be very simple. It's the consistency of showing up that matters. This could also be maybe baking the same item once a week. Maybe you do a couple batches of one particular item. You've nailed the recipe. You know people like it. You are not don't have to go overboard, but let's just say you have, um, maybe you make um, some kind of bread, right? Sourdough bread or something like that. And you decided you're going to make a couple loaves of sourdough bread every Monday. That's what you want to do to be consistent. It's easy enough for you to do. You know people are interested. You can message them. You can post about it. And that can be your consistent option. Or maybe offering a pop-up or some kind of event that you can easily set up with maybe the same venue or your favorite salon or your favorite cafe who will have you once a month, right? Let's say you just wanna show up in the community one time a month, you wanna make that consistent. Maybe you try to partner with the same business. So that's also part of consistency. Maybe you wanna spread the love and go other, other places, whatever works for you. As long as knowing that, okay, I want, to be out in the community, that's part of my core, my set of core values for my business. So I need to make that a consistent um, opportunity for my clients to find me, you know, outside in the community. So you just want to start kind of planning what's my consistent aspect going to be. Hey, Jackie's live. Good morning. She says, that's what I need to know what to do about a business name. Okay. Uh, when we get off here, Jackie, I'm going to send you, I'll link it here too, but I'll also send you a message with a link to that article. It's got a video that really kind of gives my other hot takes <laughs> on naming a business. You can take it, you can leave it, you can at least listen to what I have to say and then go from there. And there's another um, option too, if you need extra help with uh, naming. I work with, like, I can literally work with you and we can work together to create a name if that's something you want to do too. I love naming things, so <laughs> we're good. So those are the three hot takes. Keep it clean, right? Figuratively and like legally. Well, no, figuratively, literally. So clean products, um, clean business. Try to keep everything squared away. Keep it simple. Don't have to go crazy with everything. Nail it as you go. Because what you want to essentially, what you want to end up with is a list of offers that are five stars. You don't want any four-star offers, three-star offers. No, you want everything that you're offering to be great. You don't want anyone to be disappointed when they, you know, start moving around your menu and ordering different things. So again, trying to get each of them nailed down one by one, it's going to be easier than throwing everything out there and not really knowing if the products are going to do well or not. Um, so that's how I'd suggest moving forward with your offers. And then three, keeping it consistent, picking at least one way to stay consistent that matches a core vibe of how you want your business to be viewed locally and working with that. Okay, so all of those are literally sitting there, hopefully helping you simplify what's going on in your brain, calm a busy mind as you're starting out because it can be overwhelming, definitely understand that. If you're looking for that nitty gritty of starting up, as I mentioned before, like the basically like an ultimate guide article, that's what I have on the website. So you can DM me or post here and I can send you that full article. Again, it is like an ultimate guide. So there's lots of information. It's set up just in a checklist so you can read through and kind of start wherever you're currently at <clears throat> and work down. If you want me to help you through the planning and setup, as in videos, support paperwork, a baking business plan template, uh, mindset videos, things that you might feel like it would make sense to invest in a little bit of mentorship before I actually do this. I have a whole course set up called the plan for success, which also includes email support. So that's something you can choose if you want to do it kind of on your own time. And then also have some connection to me as you're working through the course itself. It helps people brainstorm plan and work on the mentality of starting a business, which a lot of people need a little bit of push, a little bit of insight. So they feel more confident as they take the next few steps as you're getting started. If you have questions about starting up, you probably do because we just went over the three hot takes today. Please let me know. That's my job. That's what I like to do. I love to talk baking business. My inbox is open. I know some mentors don't allow that. I definitely do because I want to hear from you. So you can send it there. You can also post in the group because this is a group of over 5,000 bakers who may have already done what you're looking to do or have done something similar and can give suggestions too. I'm just one person. I have, I think, 
16 or 17 years now of experience. So I do have experience, but there's lots of other people in this group who have experience too, who would probably have something to add to your question if you wanna post it in the group as well. We're always happy to help and share resources if we can. Okay, let me double check. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. Thank you much for, thank you so much for coming. That's all I have for you today. I am off to prep for my, my consistent bake, which is a weekly uh, session of like over 400 cookie dipper little cookies. Um, so I'm going to go do that for the week to stay consistent. And you're welcome to comment on this video if you have additional questions, send me messages, etc. And I will get you what you need to get some help getting started with your baking business. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.